case A, this particular image is zooming in on one chromosome. Okay? We see that this chromosome has been duplicated, so we have two sister chromatids. Now, during anaphase A, the entire chromosome, that is the two sister chromatids together, will be pushed and pulled in various directions, and then ultimately we will also see that these sister chromatids will separate. So what we're going to be looking at then is this early part of anaphase A where the chromosomes are being pushed and pulled. Remember the sister chromatids held together at the centromere region is known as a chromosome. So at the centromere region, remember we have a central protein where the microtubules are going to attach to. That's the kinetochore, illustrated in brown. So in brown is our kinetochore. Then obviously on either side, we have our microtubules coming from the right side of the cell versus the left side of the cell. And what we're going to see now are three key and very important motor proteins and their involvement with this process of moving this chromosome. We're going to be looking at two types of kinesins and dynein. Kinesin is a plus end directed motor protein. Dynein is always a minus end directed motor protein. In order for you to understand this picture, I want you to remember this main objective. The main objective here is to take this chromosome and move it to the right. Okay? So we want to move this chromosome to the right in this direction. To help us understand how this happens, there's going to be a different set of proteins that are activated on the right side of the chromosome and there's going to be action in other proteins active and inactive on the left side of the pro of this chromosome. So we're going to see that on the right side proteins are going to be pulling this chromosome to the right and on the left side there's going to be proteins pushing this chromosome towards the right. Again, the objective is that we're trying to get this chromosome to move to the right pole or to the right of the cell. So let's look at the right side of the chromosome, okay? This area right here. <clears throat> the first motor protein or motor protein system that we're going to see is kinesin 13. Remember kinesin 13 is not a traditional motor protein in the sense that it's moving cargo. Kinesin 13 is a destabilizing protein. That is, it contributes to the breakdown or depolymerization of a microtubule. So kinesin 13 is coming off of the kinetochore, so it's bound to the kinetochore, and the heads of kinesin 13 are responsible for breaking down or breaking up the microtubule here on the right side. And remember, kinesin 13 picks off the microtubule at the plus end that is full of GDP beta tubulin and picks off those alpha beta tubulin dimers a pair at a time. So that's what's happening over here. On top of kinesin 13 being active and destabilizing this microtubule, we also have dynein, the minus N directed motor protein. Dynein is also attached and coming off of the kinetochore and the heads of dynein are going to be walking on this microtubule towards the minus end. Okay. So the dynein is basically going to be pulling on the chromosome and pulling it towards the right of the cell. Okay. So as the dynein pulls on the chromosome to bring it towards the right side, the kinesin 13 is going to be destabilizing or depolymerizing the microtubule at the plus end just behind the dynein. So dynein has a path because it's going towards the minus end so there's still all of these microtubules intact. Okay? But the tubulins and the microtubule area at the plus end right behind it will be destabilized. This is going to create room for this chromosome to be able to move towards the right. Okay, so again, 
We're moving the chromosome to the right side of the cell. The players involved on the right side, on this right kinetic core, is dynein pulling on the chromosome and the kinesin 13 depolymerizing this microtubule here. Now, I said before, on the left side of this chromosome, there's going to be the opposite effect. We're going to see proteins that are going to be pushing on this chromosome to also assist it in bringing it towards the right. So on the left side then of the chromosome, we have also dynein and kinesin 13, but they are inactive at this point. So the dynein and kinesin 13 on the left side of the chromosome is inactive. But there is another motor protein that is active. This is kinesin 7. Kinesin 7 is bipolar in a sense. So kinesin 7 has one set of heads that's bound and walking along the microtubule towards the plus end. And the other end, and the other pair of heads of kinesin 7 is attached to the kinetochore. So as kinesin 7 is walking along this microtubule on the left side towards the plus end, it's going to be pushing up against this chromosome and assisting in taking this chromosome to the right. Okay. So on the right side of the chromosome you have kinesin 13 destabilizing this microtubule, dynein pulling on the chromosome bringing it to the right side of the cell. On the left side of the chromosome you have kinesin 7 pushing up against the chromosome, also helping it to move towards the right of the cell. Okay. So that's what I want you to understand out of anaphase A. Kinesin 7 is a motor protein pushing the chromosome towards the right of the cell. Kinesin 13 is a destabilizing protein on the right side of the uh, chromosome. Dynein, a minus end directed motor protein coming off of the kinetic core, walking towards the minus end of the microtubule, pulling on the chromosome, ultimately to get this chromosome moved towards the right pole. Again, please do not hesitate to replay this a few times, listen to it a few times, and email me about it, okay? Or come see me about this. The next one then is anaphase B. Remember, anaphase B now is helping to push and pull the two centrioles or the poles further apart, thus stretching the cell. Okay? Because again, we want the cell to stretch so we have enough room to have our two new daughter nuclei established, develop our contractile ring in the middle, and eventually pinch one cell into two. So we need to cause anaphase B to happen. So it's the other two pairs of microtubules, the interpolar microtubules and the astral microtubules that contribute to anaphase B. So the first one that we're going to look at then is the interpolar microtubules. So these are the microtubules coming from the centriole but that do not interact with the kinetochore but in fact interact with each other. Okay. So Here's a pair of interpolar microtubules here. We're going to zoom in on that picture, and we see this picture here, this slide here. So what you see is that you have this microtubule up top, which is coming from the left side of the cell, so from the left centriole. And then you have another microtubule here at the bottom, which originated from the right side, or the right pole. In between these microtubules is another motor protein. This motor protein is kinesin 5. Now, yes, I'm going to quickly jump off topic. There are several kinesins that you must keep track of. Kinesin 13, kinesin 7, and now we're throwing kinesin 5 at you. Okay? So kinesin 5 is involved with these interpolar microtubules. Kinesin 5 is a plus-end directed motor protein, 
and it too is bipolar. So Kinesin 5 is bipolar, meaning that it's got one pair of heads that are going to interact with this top microtubule, and then it's got a second pair of heads that's going to interact with the bottom microtubule. So when the kinesin is energized by ATP and goes through its cross bridge cycle or walking mechanism along the microtubule, it's going to be walking towards the plus end of the microtubule, but it will also have a power stroke. And this power stroke is going to cause the microtubules to move in the opposite direction, so towards their minus end. <clears throat> so, so in other words, if we looked at this top one here, this top microtubule, this is the minus end, this is the plus end. The kinesin is going to be walking towards the plus end, but when it power strokes or gets rid of the inorganic phosphate, it's going to push the microtubule towards the minus end. And the same thing at the bottom. The kinesin 5 pair of heads at the, on the bottom microtubule are going to be walking towards the plus end, but ultimately pushing the microtubule towards the minus end. So the arrows that you see on this slide, the black arrows, are showing you the direction in which the microtubules are moving, not the direction of the kinesin. Because kinesin 5 is walking towards the plus end, but it will push, when it power strokes, the microtubule towards the minus end. This is ultimately going to cause a pushing of the centrioles, or of the poles, further apart. And now, still looking at anaphase B, not only do we have pushing due to the interpolar microtubules, we also have pulling due to the astral microtubules. So the third set of microtubules are the astral microtubules, again the ones that are growing from the centriole but binds to the plasma membrane. So again we zoom in on one of these astral microtubules. And what we see is that the minus end of the microtubule, the astral microtubule, again originating from the centriole, the plus end of the microtubule is found up near the plasma membrane. Now, coming off of the plasma membrane, anchored to the plasma membrane, is a dynein, a minus end directed motor protein. Dynein is going to be bound to the plasma membrane and the heads that interact with the microtubule will be ultimately walking towards the minus end. Now, what's going to happen here is that this is going to create a pulling force. So this particular dynein is going to be pulling on the microtubule as if you were pulling on a rope. Okay? So if you're standing still and you're grabbing a rope and you're pulling on the rope, Okay? That's exactly what dynein is doing, because it's stationary, and it's pulling on this microtubule rope, which is ultimately connected to the centriole. So this pulling is ultimately pulling on the centriole, helping to pull it further apart. So 